Okay, so I am a big fan of mediation. I mediate myself and I taught the topic for more than 20 years. And so it's not surprising that I'm someone who almost always thinks that negotiated or mediated resolution is better than court and better than fighting. You know, for many years, I had a bumper sticker on my door that said, mediate, don't litigate. But then underneath in a marker, I put in parens, if appropriate. So when you hear that, you know that I am not a mediation absolutist. That is to say that as much as I think mediation is a really great process for many people, there are times when it's not a good idea. Yeah. And today I'm going to give you four times when I think mediation isn't the way to go. And the first time, this may sound obvious, but I suspect it isn't, is that when you yourself are simply not open to compromise. So one of the most frustrating things that I've experienced as a mediator is you go into the mediation and one of the two parties has absolutely no willingness to make any compromise. The very nature of mediation is that somehow you have to be willing to move off of whatever your current demand is. Now, let me be clear. One of the beauties of mediation is that a mediation can actually help you and the other side meet all of your underlying interests. But typically, a mediation does not get you the position because if it were just to get you the current position you had, you wouldn't need the mediation. So the very nature of a mediation is that it helps parties move from their positions to underlying interests so that together they can come up with an outcome that meets their interests. And so if you're not willing to compromise, then don't waste your time. Now, a second reason why mediation might not be appropriate is in conditions where there have been very historic power differentials in ways that have sometimes played out in abusive or inappropriate outcomes between the parties in their history before they have come to the mediation table. So, for example, if there is a history of, let's say, violent domestic abuse, or in situations perhaps of sexual violence or assault. Those may be examples where mediation is not appropriate. Now, I want to be careful here, right? People have very strong views on this. In fact, there's a lot of literature in my field specifically on this issue of mediation in the context of power differentials. There are some people who say, if there's a history of domestic abuse or sexual assault, that mediation should never happen. I am actually not in that camp. And that is because I think that there are times when even in the context of that bad history, a mediation can be set up in such a way that parties can be protected from a replication of the power differential. And in the mediation, they could come up with an agreement that is better for both sides, that actually prevents further trauma, that maybe even results in something restorative if the sides want that. However, I also am very cautious about use of mediation in these contexts because the danger is that the same kind of abuse or trauma or power differential gets replicated in the mediation in a way that yields an outcome that is unjust and unfair. And so this hesitancy is one that needs to be carefully considered. A third area where you shouldn't actually enter into a mediation is when you have zero belief that the other side is operating in good faith. Again, I want to caution here because most of the time in a mediation, the parties enter and they're not saying good things about each other. But that's a little bit different than thinking this other side is absolutely operating without good faith at all. And in a situation like that, mediation really isn't the right process because a mediation can really be used 
by a bad faith party to drag out a process in a way that's really quite unfair. So I'm going to use an example of some years ago where I was a mediator and it was one of the very few times where I withdrew from the mediation. And I withdrew from the mediation because at some point I felt that one of the two sides had actually no intention of making any compromises at all. They were not there in good faith. They were purposefully using the extended mediation process to wear down the other side so that when the mediation failed, the other side would have expended so many resources and be so exhausted that then they would cave to a very bad deal. And so in a situation like that, even as a mediator, I felt the ethical thing to do was to withdraw from the mediation. Last is a really important reason why you might say no to a mediation. Because in some circumstances, the point of the conflict is not just to resolve the differences between the parties, but in fact, one of the parties may want to make a very important broader point or to vindicate a right in some way. So what are some examples? The historic case of Brown versus Board of Education, the case that integrated public schools in the United States, that was probably a case that shouldn't have been mediated even if it could have been mediated. Well, why is that the case? It's because the value of having the Supreme Court say that separate but equal schools was unconstitutional had a more profound impact than simply solving a dispute in a local school district over whether black children could be integrated with white children. Other kinds of examples that probably are not very good for mediation are around abortion rights or LGBTQ rights. But aside from these big societal issues, sometimes an individual party might just feel like they want a court of law to vindicate them, right? So a mediation they'll feel can make something go away but they want a more public vindication. So more recently, Ed Sheeran, who was sued by the estate of Marvin Gaye for allegedly plagiarizing one of Marvin Gaye's songs, decided this was not good for mediation because Ed Sheeran really wanted to vindicate his own name. Similarly, Gwyneth Paltrow is sued for injuring a doctor on ski slopes. And rather than settle, in fact, she had an offer to settle this case for $300,000, but she actually says no to that settlement and proceeds with the litigation, mostly because she felt it was worth vindicating her own justice and her own righteousness in this situation. So, mediation, a very powerful dispute resolution tool, but not to be used all the time. Four times when you should consider not using mediation. One, if you're just not open to compromise at all, Two, if there are very big and historic power differentials that might play out in the mediation in a way that actually would replicate the same kinds of harms that had happened before the mediation. Three, if you believe the other side has no intention or is incapable of operating in good faith. And fourth, when it's important either to vindicate a legal right or to make a public statement about justice or what you feel is right. So if you have enjoyed this video, keep watching the next one, which is what happens if you don't agree in mediation. And before you go, it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, and like this video. Thanks for watching. Click, click, click. Keep watching. Don't go now.